everybody this is Dan by myself on a dreary looking day um, the cloud cover is in wall to wall or horizon to horizon <laughs> it is um, five degrees in southern British Columbia which would make it about 41 uh, translated into American so it's not cold cold um, in fact I have, I've got my coat with me but I'm not actually wearing it uh, but it is damp it's what I call a typical British Columbia <laughs> day in the winter um, but as we all say in the Pacific it's wet um, the good news is you don't have to shovel it and so I think there is a, a sort of mentality here in this part of the world where, you know, we're not what I call rugged. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we don't want to be shoveling snow. Uh, we like it that we can actually travel for an hour and get to the snow. That, that makes us, a lot of people very happy. Uh, as you may know, we, we live in an idyllic situation where literally you can be sailing in the morning and skiing in the afternoon if you're an outdoorsy sort of person. Um, but we do have an incredible amount of rain in the course of a year. <laughs> and it, it affects a lot of people. It affects a lot of people because it makes them gloomy. And perhaps gloomy should be the word of the day, and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so that would be actually a fair description of, of, of how it looks outside at the moment. You know, it's not bright, sunshiny day or anything to lift your spirits. It's a pretty gloomy looking day, generally. And again, we go back to, well, you know, it depends how you look at it. The number one thing that I'm thinking of right now is um, that Louisiana Laurie is having her operation today and hopefully by the time you guys watch this we will have good news um, that her operation went well. Uh, I have been so aware of it for the last 24 hours that really has made me very grateful and I really don't care about the weather I care about uh, a good outcome for Louisiana Laurie I say that because you know it's all about perception you can look at today and say yuck what a horrible day when actually it isn't really such a horrible day it is a quite a pleasant day because all that is gloomy is the weather and if, if we allow just the weather to affect our mood, then we don't have much self-control. And I think that is what I want to talk about. Now, for those of you who know Nana, um, Nana asked me a question earlier in the week, and I've promised her I would get to it. And here it is, Nana. <laughs> um, because she said that she remembers my saying on a broadcast once that I don't do Christmas well. And she wanted to know why. And I think I have spoken about this before, but you know, it's like we all have our reasons, right? Um, my first reason why is because as a very young kid, you have to understand, I was sent to boarding school at the age of about six, I think, I went to boarding school. 
Um, and, you know, that's a sort of not a, a concept that you have here in North America. Uh, but in England, if you are privileged to be able to do so, you know, you sent your children to boarding school. And basically, there's a lot to be said for the fact that you shipped your kids off <laughs> for most of the year. Uh, and got on with your lives and the kids just came home for school holidays now um, Basically, that's what you did and You had different levels of schooling um, Now I went to a high Anglican school which is as close to Roman Catholic as you can get if you remember your history uh, High Anglican is what Henry VIII created when the Catholic Church wouldn't let him get divorced. And so it, it's sort of built on the Catholic model, but it, the difference was it allowed divorce. Um, and so I was brought up in a, a high Anglican convent, run by the nuns. And, and let me say I was schooled by them rather than brought up by them. I was schooled by them, and yes, to some degree brought up by them. You'd have to say that, because I probably spent more time with the nuns than I did with my parents. And so, you have to understand, as a, my first term or semester of doing that was the pre-Christmas semester. That's when the school year starts in England or did. Um, and so my first semester was mind-blowing for me. I'd never been away from home, you know, and, and suddenly I was in boarding school. And you can imagine the effect that had on me, and I loved it. Go, go figure. I absolutely loved it. Um, I had a friend, you know, I'd grown up on a big farm on my basically on my own other than my siblings and relatives but I grew up on a 3,000 acre farm in the middle of nowhere um, over an hour away from the nearest town which even in England was unusual so it was quite an upbringing and I went off to boarding school and I inhaled it. I mean, suddenly I had friends to play with every day and I had, you know, structure that was very different and rules that actually were very different. So I was re very, very impressionable. And I just, it always makes me think about something that the Jesuits always said, you know, give me a child until they're seven and I've got them for life. Um, and so anyway, I was very impressionable as a six-year-old. And what I really remember, and I remember it to this day as clear as day, is just before we went home for Christmas, we had a school play that we put on for ourselves. And... It was about a family that was so poor that they couldn't afford gifts for Christmas. And so what the mother did is she wrapped up boxes, empty boxes, filled with love. Now, as a six-year-old, that really impressed me. The fact that somebody would wrap up love and give it to you for Christmas, to me, was just like, wow. Isn't that magical? And I was really impressed and unfortunately went home and raved about this play that we did and the concept of love. The nuns will never know what they did to me in that moment. Well, in fact, they didn't. Because when it came to Christmas morning, there were gifts under the tree like you cannot imagine. 
and my brother's got remote control airplanes and you know whatever uh, very very generous Christmas gifts for everybody and lots of them and there was just the one box for me and it was extremely light and when I opened it and there was nothing inside it I sort of queried it and I always remember the look on my mum's face as she said oh but we filled it full of love and then everybody burst out laughing You know, being shamed at Christmas on a subject such as love, I think, is pretty cruel, myself. And I know that the whole family got a huge laugh out of it. But here I am at 67, and you can probably still feel the pain. Isn't this strange? Which is why I've said during this week that there, there are some things that we fear, some things that affect us that we will maybe never correct in our lifetime, although it is our job to keep trying to do so. And so, yeah, that, that really started it for me, um, as you can imagine. My little psyche had a scar on it that I <laughs> that I didn't uh, particularly like. Um, and then I, I sort of, you know, you know, you work your way through these things, and that things are doing well. And then many years later, when I was married, um, it got to be Christmas Eve, and I had my mother visiting from England so a lot of stress on that one because my mother was really quite uh, overpowering him in some ways for me um, and I got up Christmas morning no Christmas Eve morning and there was something wrong, you know, the, the vibration in, in, in my bedroom was wrong. And I wonder if any of you know what I mean by that vibration. You know, it just, you could just feel something was off. So I said to my husband, <laughs> uh, what's up? And one thing you learn in law is don't ask a question to which you do not know the answer. If you're ever in court, <laughs> don't ever ask a question to which you do not know the answer. So, because, you know, a surprise answer can really floor you. And unfortunately, I had not watched enough Law and Order at that stage because they hadn't started it yet. Anyway, so, what's up? And it was then that I found out that everything was up and that my husband was in love with his secretary. And, um... needed me to be gone and that was so stunning to me if you can imagine it was so stunning for me um, on a Christmas Eve. How could anybody do that on Christmas Eve? Well, anyway. Um, and so I spent that Christmas with my heart torn, torn out and packing up. And I was gone by New Year.
it, it was really very, very difficult. So anyway, I don't want this to be a downer. I'm just answering a question um, that I was asked. So those two things um, sort of really had an effect on me. I found that I really got tied into the commercialism of Christmas as well. You know, you forget why we really have it. And so this year, for the first year, I've decided not to go that route. And I really not, you know, spent hordes of money because I don't have it this year. Um, I'm And my friends know that, and they know me well enough that I've never ever done that before, or never had that conversation before, but this year I did. And so I guess in a way it's difficult for me because um, I don't have as much to give, and that for some reason is hurtful to me. And yet, in my re um, in in my reality, I understand that's not the issue at all. I mean, it's not what Christmas is about, and I'm going to do everything I can to wrap up what little I have nicely <laughs> and be very grateful for it, um, and be happy to give, and be happy to have friends that I can give it to. So. But I am noticing that I am really having issues uh, with energy levels, and that I've been having them for a week now. And so I'm wondering whether there isn't some sort of low-grade um, funk going on at the moment, where because I get home and I really don't want to do anything. I don't want to wrap. I don't want to bake. I just want to go get the vlog up and go to sleep. But it is interesting that I do want to get the vlog up. <laughs> so that tells me a lot that um, I hold you guys um, very high and part of my daily routine, which is interesting to me. So, Anna, I hope you better understand why I don't do Christmas well. Now, we had a lot of conversation this week about rationalizing things, and is it a rational lie that Christmas is painful to me? Um, yes, Christmas isn't painful to me. It's my association of hurt with Christmas that is painful to me. It's got really nothing to do with Christmas itself. And so intellectualizing it, totally understand that. I believe that part of my issue with Christmas is that I hate the stress of it. And I never feel organized. <laughs> Why? Because I'm not. Uh, and I really admire people who, you know, are organized and and do it easily. And, and you really are incredibly fortunate. You have no idea how much trouble the rest of us have. Um, and, you know, it, it doesn't make any logical sense because if you look at it logically, you go, well, why didn't you start getting organized yeah, two months ago? I don't know, because it was two months away. So I need some support here from those of you who understand what I'm talking about. Um, and the other thing is, for some reason, it's attached to my self-worth. Why is that? I have no idea. I've got to look at that. Anyway. So, 
it's Thursday. Oh, it's Thursday. I forgot to mention that. And I don't work Friday, so this is my Friday. Um, and I'm going to go and have a really good day at work. Hopefully. And... I am going to wrap my mind around this time of year and I'm going to challenge myself to go home and wrap at least one present tonight before I flake out. That would be a really good thing to do. All right, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're not gloomy. And if you are feeling gloomy, um, do what you can to do something creative, either with your mind or with your hands, um, to cheer you up. And I want to tell you what's really difficult is to have this discussion uh, about being sad at Christmas and then to change that mentality. So, as you can hear, I'm working really hard to make sure I get that one corrected before I walk into work. Because that would be very difficult to walk into work with that um, sadness hanging over me. Because I would probably transmit it without even realizing. So, I'm going to be a happy little camper from this point on. <laughs> I'm going to choose to change my mood from gloomy to glorious. And grateful. because that poor flag person is still standing in the rain and looking drenched. I'm so glad I don't have that job <laughs> in British Columbia. I, you know, I just wouldn't be able to hack it, I'm afraid. All right, everybody, have a glorious day. And I will chat with you tomorrow. This is Dear Mama Bye-bye.